situation in your life. This is how I fight my battles. Yes, we don't have to get entangled in the mess. This is how I fight my battles. Yes, oh God, this is how we fight. This is how I fight my battles. Hey, we serve a victorious God. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Where the worship is at. This is how I fight my battles. 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 Hey! It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hey, when my hits you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes, it may look like. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I don't care. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Hey, hallelujah. We're just so grateful that we serve a victorious God. And I thank you that the battle ain't mine. How many of you think grateful that you don't have to fight some of this mess? See, we make mistakes when we get entangled and when we don't just stay in our place and let God fight our battles. Amen. Because he's a victorious God. He's never lost a fight. He's never lost a battle. We want to welcome you here in the house. And we came to praise and worship the Most High God. So if you're here in the house, I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet. And we want to get free in Jesus. And those of you who have logged in online, we are so grateful that God has put on your heart to connect with Love Fellowship and that he has enlarged our territories. Let's go before our Father in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come as a body. We just come saying thank you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you, oh God, for all that you have done. You are the most high God. You are a faithful Savior. You are our healer. You are our provider. You are our protector. And we just give you all the glory and honor. We welcome you into this, uh, this moment of worship, oh God. Father, we want you to take over. We're looking for a Holy Ghost breakout in here, oh God. We're believing for signs, wonders, and miracles. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And all the saints of God say hallelujah. you oh God we came to worship the Lord our God amen amen and we're looking forward to the love fellowship choir really joining in and worship this morning hallelujah hallelujah come on put your hands
is my God. All will see how great, how great is my God. See, I can declare how great he is this morning. We had a normal morning in our house, and I got dressed, and I was in the kitchen preparing for the day. In the matter of 45 minutes, I had two phone calls about serious car accidents that happen to those that are near and dear to me. But let me tell you, both of them walked away. Both of them walked away. When your child texts you and says, I had a blowout, and that's all you hear. You got to stand in faith and trust the name of the Lord. I didn't even have a location to go run to, but I knew how great is my God. I knew that there is no God like Jehovah, and I'm standing on his divine protection. How great is my God? Sing with me. against us. Come on, I want you to think about that. I know we got some things that have our knees knocking and we get nervous, but we got to remember that if God be for us, nobody can be against us. You're not getting kind of crazy to go up against you when you're standing in the name of the Most High God. When Alpha and Omega is on your side, why would you go up against him? We got to remember whose side we're on.
in the blood of Jesus. There's deliverance in the blood of Jesus. of the blood of Jesus, hallelujah. Because that power of the blood, it can wash away all hurt and all pain. It can wash away all sickness and disease. Nothing but the blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is truly worthy today. Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, he is worthy of all the glory. I said he's worthy of all the glory on this morning. He is worthy of all the honor and the praise. We exalt his holy name this morning. Nothing but the precious blood of Jesus can wash away our sins. Hallelujah. Nothing but the precious blood of Jesus can make us whole and complete in him. Nothing but that blood. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning that if you be for us, who can be against us? No matter whether it's accidents, no matter whether it's tire blowouts, no matter whether it's sickness, no matter whether it's disease, if you be for us, who can be against us? We thank you today that you are for us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Your love says that you are for us. Your grace says that you are for us today. Your mercy says that you are for us. And we honor you today. We bless you today. We praise and we magnify your holy and your righteous name on today. And we ask even now that you would lead us and guide us and direct us as we, oh God, hear from you. We want to know what you are saying to us in this season and time that we are in. Lord, what are you saying? God, what are you saying to your people? What are you saying to the families that are here today? We thank you that you have a, an ability to speak to us right where we are. And for this, we are forever grateful. Lord, we pray for brother Terrell Lord we pray for divine healing and deliverance and breakthrough <laughs> that no weapon formed against him shall prosper we thank you that he walked away from that accident in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord it could have went the other way but we thank you in the name of Jesus that he walked away what the enemy meant for bad, God worked it out for his good. So God, we thank you for our drummer. No matter what calamity has come, he is, he is well with you. <laughs> Father, we pray even now, Lord Jesus, 
that you would move on the hearts and minds of every person that is here that they would open up their spiritual eyes and their spiritual ears to hear what you are saying on today we bless you now and we praise you now for your great and awesome power manifesting in our lives and it is in Jesus name we pray and all in agreement come on and shout hallelujah in this place come on hallelujah hallelujah come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise amen we welcome we welcome we welcome you and your families amen all of our youth our teams as well as our uh, kids for the kingdom that's K through fourth grade amen they have classes available our teachers are ready to teach you may take your seats amen welcome 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 to Love Fellowship Church on today those that are viewing online or those that are here in live service for the first time we welcome you as well we truly believe that the Word of God has the power to transform our lives amen and we're just so thankful for the Word of God today as we continue in this series entitled what is God saying come on everybody say it say it with me what is the Lord Say, amen. I truly believe it's important that we know, we recognize, and we understand what the Lord is saying to us. Amen. I believe that God is always speaking if we will be attentively listening to what He is saying. How many believe that Jesus is our ultimate power source? Anybody believe that? If you believe that, raise your hand. Amen. I truly believe that Jesus Christ is the ultimate power source for our lives. Amen. He's the ultimate power source for everything that we need in the earth realm. And what's great about it is God delegated that power, he being Elohim, the creator of all living things, he delegated that power unto Jesus. He gave Jesus the authority and the power to speak to us, amen? It's important as families, it's important as singles, it's important as born-again believers that we hear, we know, and we do what the Lord is saying. It's vitally important to our lives that we hear, know, and do what the Lord is saying, amen? Without a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's hard to know what God is saying. Because the only way you can really connect with God is you must first connect with his son. Without a connection with Jesus, you really can't know what God is saying. And the way you connect with Jesus is to receive him as your personal Lord and Savior. It is important, it is vital that we understand that there is no real connection to God's voice without a connection to his son. Sometimes our connection with Jesus on our end gets a little shaky, amen? Not on Jesus' end, but on our end. Sometimes we act as if we don't have a connection. But I want to start off today by turning with you and me to John chapter 10. And Jesus makes it crystal clear in the Amplified Classic version that without this connection, then we really can't know God. Amen. Notice, notice the title of this message. Again, this is part two. What is God saying? John chapter 10 and verse 27. Notice what the scripture says here in the Amplified Classic Version. It says, the sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice. <laughs> notice, notice, notice. He says, the sheep that are my own, they hear and are listening to my voice. And I know them, Jesus said. And guess what? They follow me. Notice verse 28. And I give them eternal life. How many of you have eternal life through Jesus Christ today? Amen. 
That ought to get you excited. He said, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never lose it or perish throughout the ages. That's a promise. That's a promise that Jesus made as he was setting the stage, as he was letting the people know, listen, I know you know Elohim, the God who reigns supreme, the creator of all living things. I know you know Jehovah Jireh, the one who Abraham said would be the Lord that provides, but I need you to know me. <laughs> he said, I need you to not only know me, but I need you to be my sheep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, I'm inviting you to be my sheep. And he says in verse 27, he says, the sheep that are my own, they hear and are listening to my voice. I have a question for you today. Amen. Are you the sheep that belong to Jesus? Are you the sheep that belong to Jesus? He says, the sheep that are my own, they hear, but then they go beyond hearing. Amen. He says, they hear, and then they do what? And they are listening. That requires active participation. Jesus, in the New Living Translation, the scripture says that not only do they hear his voice, but they are actively listening to what the shepherd has to say. Yes. And then it goes on to say, and I know them. Wow. Does Jesus know you? I'm not talking about does he know you because you're a human being in the earth realm. Yes, God knows all of us from that perspective. But does he know you as his son or daughter? Amen. Does he know you as a child of the king. <laughs> Does he know you as someone that's obedient to him? Amen. Does he know you as someone that is actively listening and hearing his voice? This is how we need to roll in 2022. We need to be actively hearing and listening to the power source. Who is that power source? It's Jesus. He's the power source of everything. Now, I'm going to make a bold statement, and, and some of you may agree or some of you may disagree, but I truly believe that whatever I need to know, Jesus has the answers. How many of you believe that today? I don't care if I need to know whether or not I need to buy shoes or not. If I ask Jesus, he can direct me how to buy those shoes. Amen. Whatever I need, whether it's small or whether it's big, Jesus has the answers. I believe Jesus was setting them up for this type of understanding when he was walking the earth. He says, my sheep that are my own hear and are listening to my voice, and I know them, and they what? They follow me. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? To the point where he can know, amen, that you are following him. See, to follow Jesus means to have an intimate relationship with him. It doesn't mean that you follow him from a distance or far off, but it means that you follow him on a daily, on an hourly, on a regular basis. Does anybody follow Jesus like that? That's the caliber of following that he was speaking about here in John chapter 10 and verse number 27. But he gives them a promise. He said, I give them eternal life. This is what God did. He set it up where as believers we can have ultimately a, a power connection to Jesus Christ and eternal life. God has given us Tools to connect with the ultimate power source. If we believe that Jesus is the ultimate power source, then there has to be a way or ways or tools that we connect with that ultimate power source. And so, amen, we're going to look in the balance of my time at some of these tools. Amen. Now, it's hard to live in this world that we live in without the Internet. How many of you know that? Amen. 
if the internet shut down in the sanctuary or in the house of God, we wouldn't have live stream, we wouldn't have uh, uh, sound, we wouldn't have a lot of things. Because most things today, we used to say 30 years ago that the, the power source was, was, was what was at, in the wall, amen? But too many things now are wireless. This can shut down, but if you got a connection wirelessly to the internet, you're still rolling, amen? And you can watch TV without that power source. You can, amen, listen to the radio without that power source. You can do whatever, watch movie. You can do everything without connecting with this power source. Now, I'm going some way. This power source, amen, you, 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 you can touch it. You can see it. You can plug something up to it. Jesus, we don't see Jesus. We don't see him. You see him? You, do you see Jesus physically today? He's not walking the earth today, but we can still connect with him. It's almost like a, a wireless connection to the one that has every answer to every question that you have. Heaven, amen, is a place that physically we can't go until we leave this earth. But while you're still on the earth, if you have a connection to Jesus, you can connect to heaven. Amen. Amen. And I believe heaven has an unending supply for everything that we need. What about you today? I believe, amen, that whatever you need in this earth realm, heaven has it. And the way to connect with heaven is through Jesus Christ. But how do we connect with Jesus? The first way we know is through salvation. Jesus said it here in verse 28, and I give them eternal life. Salvation speaks to eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior, then we receive eternal life. Amen. We're called saved or born again at that point. And now we have access to the tools that can give us a connection to the remote power source or the wireless power source that never can be stopped. The difference between Jesus and the Internet, the Internet can shut down. The Internet can be blocked, but Jesus can never be shut down or blocked. That's good news this morning. I said he can never be shut down or blocked. He is always flowing whenever you're ready to connect with him. Now, when we were in uh, on vacation last week, when we were in a uh, week before last, and we were in Nevada talking about tools, my wife convinced me to buy these knockoffs. Anybody know what a knockoff is? <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. It's shaking, you know. <laughs> I'm like, this has got to be a knockoff. <laughs> the knockoff beat collection, amen. The guy in the store, he was so serious about these knockoffs. <laughs> he was trying to, I mean, he was doing his best sales job. First of all, he tried to isolate me and my wife. Because they had a massage chair. He said, why don't you sit in the massage chair? <laughs> then he took her over to the counter and started showing her all the knockoffs. <laughs> My wife says, it's not a knockoff, amen. I don't know the name of it. That's why I call it a knockoff. <laughs> it's not Beats. How about that? We all know Beats. Anybody know Beats? I got a sister Judy like, I know Beats, Pastor. It is not Beats. There's no Beats on this, Amen. <laughs> So whatever you want to call these, he was charging like three, four hundred dollars, some crazy amount. And I was sitting in the chair and he had reclined me back and it was massaging me, my head, my feet. And he was steady talking to Pastor Renee, he just going, just going. And she was just eating it up, eyes getting big. And I'm sitting over there giving her signals. I'm not paying $400 for knockoffs. At least they could have wrote beats on it or something. 
So, hey, man, I, I'm my father's son in one degree. Uh, my father, he worked in New York City for many years in the garment district, the lower east side of Manhattan. And, and one of the things that he did back then was he learned from a lot of older Jews that were in the garment industry, you never take full price for anything. You always negotiate. And there was a word that he uses. I can't use that word, amen. But you always negotiate. You always bring that price down. And, and I would love, I, I used to love to watch him in action like that. He would... He could, he could just haggle and go down and go down and go till he got the price that he wanted. And my wife was just edging me and egging me and egging me to get these, whatever you call them, amen, <laughs> these headphones. But the price wasn't where I wanted it to be, amen. And so I started praying and asking God, what is the price? Because I knew I couldn't walk out of that store without them because she was already being sold. So my only hope was, God, give me a price that you believe is the best price. And we walked out of that store, and we got about $200 off these knockoffs. Amen. I felt real good about the price. And then he threw in a charger and some other things, so that made me feel even better. And an extra pair, right? We got two on top of it. And I told my wife, I said, see, this is why, this is how you know that it's knockoff. He, if they were real beats, he would have never threw in an extra pair. My wife sold me. She said, I haven't had headphones since I was a teenager. She told me, she said, listen, when we fly back, you're going to need these. I said, well, I'm going to need these. She said, give me all the sales benefits. You can watch movies. You can Listen to the uh, uh, Pandora or, or any of those uh, networks for music. You can do all of these things when you put these on top of your head. So we get to the, when we're flying back, she pulls out hers, she pulls out mine, and, 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 and I put them on top of my head, and nothing's happening. <laughs> There's no on or off button there. <laughs> How? Now we just spent all this money and it's not work. And guess what? We're in the air, so there's no conventional power source. So what do I have to connect with? I gotta connect wirelessly. I gotta connect remotely. But that presented another problem. In the air, you can't connect with the internet down here. Not when you're 10, 12, 15,000 feet up or however hard you are. You can't do that. So I don't know how to connect. I look over at my wife. She's watching movies. She's on whatever, listening, to, doing all kinds of stuff, having a great time. So I nudge her. I say, how do I get this thing to turn on? How do I connect? She said, you got you to gotta connect with American Airlines. That's the carrier we were flying. Their own internet. And you got to go to airplane mode. So I needed two tools. I had one tool, which was these headsets. But then I had another tool, amen, which I had to do on my phone, which is the airplane mode, and then connecting from my phone to the internet. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And so when I connected to American Airlines, now this tool worked. And this was the tool that allowed, it, allowed me to hear. I'm going somewhere with this. Because even though I had this tool, amen, it got me to the American Airlines Internet service. But without this tool, I still couldn't hear what was on the Internet or what was being provided through the Internet. So my wife was right. I needed some tools, one I had and the other one I didn't have. I want to submit to you today, if we're going to hear and hear what God is saying, then we need some tools also. And we need tools that are wireless, amen? We need tools that, 
The earth can't shut down. Hallelujah. We need tools that the devil can't shut down. We need tools that man cannot shut down. I truly believe that there's some heavenly tools that God has given us that gives us a connection to the power source that no man can ever stop. How many of you believe that today? As much as I fought her against these headsets, I realized that I was a lot better with these than without these. Because it gave me access to things that I didn't know I had access to when I'm flying in the air. I want to submit to you today the tools that we're talking about today. You are much better with them than without them. Amen. Because they give you access. Everybody say, I need access. Not access to movies. Not access to Pandora or any of these other sites. But access to the power source. Access to answers to whatever question you have about life. You have questions about business. God will give you access through the tools. Amen. You have questions about your marriage. God will give you access through the tools. You have questions about your children. God can give you access to hear the answers through the tools. How many of you want to hear these tools? Amen. You already, if you are connected to the power source, source called Jesus, you already have access to them. But it's about utilizing what you have access to. And so I want to, we're not going to get through all of these tools today. But I want to open up the conversation because our title today is, What is God Saying About Every Area and Every Aspect of Our Lives? Amen. So turn with me to Jeremiah 29. This is where we left off last week. We're talking now about the power tools, the power tools that give us heavenly access, amen? The power tools that help us understand what God is saying. We said Jeremiah chapter 29 in the Message Bible. This is what we're starting off today, amen, with the power tools in the Message Bible, starting at verse number uh, 12. Jeremiah 29 in the Message Bible, starting at verse number 12. Praise the Lord. Notice, notice, notice. Jesus says this. He says, when you call on me, and then he breaks it down. He says, when you call on me, when you come and what? Pray and listen. He said, I'll listen. So the first tool is prayer. The first power tool that the enemy cannot shut down, that the enemy cannot stop, that always works, no matter if the regular internet shuts down or not, no matter if the traditional power source shuts down or not, this is a power source that will never shut down. It's a tool like these headsets that will give you remote access whenever you need it, and you need it all the time. This tool is called prayer. And God spoke to Jeremiah the prophet, and he said, I need you to tell them about this power tool. The children of Israel were in captivity for 70 years he said, but I need you to school them on this power tool called prayer. So verse 12, again, in the Message Bible for Jeremiah 29, it says, when you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I will listen. Yes. Yes, that's it does no good if I would have got on that plane and just kept these headsets on my ear and didn't have access to the power source called the Internet. I would have just had headsets on my ear listening to the person next to me, but never listening to what I wanted to hear. How many of you want to hear God's voice? God says when you call on him, when you pray to him, he said, I'll listen. The reason why many of us are operating out of our flesh and out of our natural intellect is because we're not calling and we're not praying enough. Or we're not calling and we're not praying consistently. 
He says, when you come looking for me, you will find me. That power tool of prayer is a vital way to go looking for God. See, God is not lost, but we understand that, amen, sometimes we get lost and we got to ask God to redirect us back to him. It's not that God is lost. It's simply that sometimes life causes us to get lost. Life causes us to get missing. And when we get missing, all type of chaos and hell can break loose in our lives. And when we're in the midst of chaos and confusion, you know how we do. We cry out to the Lord, but then we have to be redirected. And then we realize how far we've gotten off track. I know I'm not getting a whole lot of amens on that, but it's true, amen. The children of Israel had gotten away from God. They had gotten off track, and Jeremiah the prophet was giving them a power tool to help them get back on track. He was saying, listen, call on God. Pray to him. He will listen to you. He says, when you look for me, God said through the prophet Jeremiah, you will find me. Yes, when you get serious. Oh, my God. <laughs> We've got to be serious about these things. He says, when you get serious about finding me and want it, watch this, and want it more than anything else. I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. I don't know about you, amen, but there are times when God has to tell me in his own way that I need to tighten up and straighten up. If God has never said that to you, I would submit to you that you're, you're drifting away. Because Jesus said in John, the 10th chapter, he said, I know my sheep. If you never hear God tell you to tighten up, straighten up, get yourself in order with him and his word, something is wrong. He's not, you're not hearing him as you ought to. Because one of the things that God will always do is guide his sheep. He says, when you get serious about finding me and you want it more than anything else, more than life itself, I'll make sure you won't be disappointed. I promise you today, amen, that if you access these power tools that we're talking about, these connections to the heavenly power source, you'll never be disappointed, amen. And so prayer is so vital to what we are doing. As we live out our lives each and every day. Now, I'm going to give you a practical example in the Bible in Nehemiah chapter 2. A practical example of how prayer is necessary. Amen. And how prayer can be a great benefit to each and every one of us. How many of you know prayer is simply talking to God? But it's more than just talking. It's also listening and receiving. So there's a hearing that takes place in prayer. There's a listening that takes place in prayer. There's a receiving that takes place in prayer. And my God, there's a doing when you come up out of prayer. Amen. So all of these things are necessary when you pray. <laughs> Nehemiah here, he understood the power of prayer. In Nehemiah chapter 2, in verse number two in the New Living Translation, the scripture, amen, points out a great example of this power tool called prayer and why it's so necessary to getting answers to any and everything that you need. Nehemiah went to the king of Persia after hearing the bad report of how Jerusalem was in the place of destruction. How the walls were turned, tear, torn down. How everything around them was falling apart. But yet, Nehemiah, he was hundreds of miles away in Persia. He was living as the king's cupbearer. He was living large in Persia. 
but his people were suffering in Jerusalem. And in verse number two, it reads this way. So the king asked me, Nehemiah said, why are you looking so sad? You don't look sick to me, the king said. You must be deeply troubled. Nehemiah's response, then I was terrified. But I replied, long live the king. He says again to the king, how can I not be sad? For the city where my ancestors are buried is in ruins, and the gates have been destroyed by fire. Notice verse number four. The king asked, well, how can I help you? That was on the spot. That was on the spot. And sometimes life puts you on the spot where you got to make decisions and you don't have a whole lot of time to make them. Anybody ever been there? Amen. Sometimes life puts you, the old folks say, in a pickle or in a jam. Amen. <laughs> and you don't know which way to turn. You don't know which way to go. You can rely upon your intellect. You can rely upon your ways of doing things. You can rely upon all of the things you learned over your life, but Nehemiah chose not to do that. Nehemiah was a grown man. He wasn't a boy. He wasn't a teenager. He was a grown man, but he didn't rely upon himself. Wow. It was too much at stake for him to make a mistake. You didn't hear what I said. I said it was too much at stake for him to make a mistake. And I submit to you, your life is valuable to God. And it's too much at stake. For you to make mistake after mistake. One of the reasons this teaching has come to you is to help you turn from making so many mistakes. And having so many regrets because of the mistakes that you made over your life. If we be honest, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. But if you really be honest, amen, mistakes wear us down regrets sometimes we wake up at night thinking about stuff we should have did right that we did wrong come on I'm telling the truth in here regrets are horrible because sometimes we can't shake those regrets sometimes you lose dear friends and they never talk to you again because and you regret it because of mistakes Nehemiah knew that he had one shot with the king of Persia. And if he didn't answer him right, if he didn't come correct, then guess what? He could have been killed. Or even greater than that, the children of Israel would not have gotten the help that they needed in a desperate time and season. So again, the king in verse 4 of Nehemiah chapter 2, the king asked, well, how can I help you? Notice, notice, notice the next part of this in the New Living Translation. With a prayer, everybody say with a prayer. With a prayer, with a prayer to God, to the God of heaven, I replied. What did he do before he replied? Who did he pray to? The power source. Nehemiah understood that he had to get connected to the power source. In that split second, he took a moment to pray. We don't know how long it was. We don't know if it was five minutes, ten seconds. All we know is the king of Persia was waiting for an answer. He wanted to hear what Nehemiah was going to say. And Nehemiah knew he had to come correct because all of Jerusalem was counting on him. Nehemiah did not decide that he was grown and big and bad enough to do whatever he thought was right. He decided that it was better to connect with the eternal God, which is the eternal power source. Wow. Are you receiving this? The king asked, how can I help? Nehemiah did something. He said, with a prayer to the God of heaven, I replied. When he went to God, I don't know if he went on his knees, 
But the text, doesn't, it doesn't seem like he had time to get on his knees. It doesn't seem like he had time to go home to his prayer closet. It seemed like he had to pray right there where he was. Oh, this is good news, amen. Somebody ought to get this. <laughs> Listen, don't make it an excuse. Well, I didn't have time to pray. You always got time to pray. You can't afford not to pray. Well, I was at the dealership, and I just went to look for cars. I just went to browse for cars, and I don't know what happened, but somehow or another, I walked out with a car. Did you pray? Did you connect with the power source? Did you use the power tool? Or did you just get caught up in the moment? Even if you forget to pray at home, you can pray on your job. <laughs> You can pray at your desk. You can pray in the midnight hour. You can pray, my God, when everybody else is cut loose and acting a fool. You can pray in the liquor store. I got some big eyes. Yeah. God, I know I'm not supposed to be in here. Redirect me up out of here. I'm telling the truth. Don't tell me you don't have time to pray. Everything was on the line, and Nehemiah said, I know the king wants an answer, but I got to connect with my power source. I got to use my power tool. It was almost like he put his headsets on. His spiritual headsets. He said, now God downloaded me what I need to say. That's prayer. Some people think you got to speak in tongues. No, God, download to me what I need to say to my boss. Download to me what I need to say to this person I'm talking to right now. That's prayer. Jeremiah said if you call on God like that, he'll listen and he'll answer. If you'll pray to him like that, he'll listen and he'll answer. That's what Nehemiah did. Because some people think that prayer is intimidating because they don't pray like so-and-so and so-and-so. -and -so. Prayer is not meant to be intimidating. Watch this. Prayer is meant to be liberating. Prayer is meant to liberate you from making a bad decision. Prayer is meant to liberate you from bondage that you've gotten yourself in. Prayer is not intimidating, it's liberating. Somebody need to write that down. It's liberating. And so you ought to be liberated often. And when you're in a situation that you know you should be in, pray. How do I get out of this, God? When we got the when we got the call this morning about Terrell, he had a head-on collision, our drummer. All we could do was pray. It happened this morning. Minister Shauna said she was FaceTiming with him around the time that it happened. All she could do was pray. She immediately called me. All I could do is... None of us could get to him, but the power of prayer could get to him. You didn't hear that. I said, none of us could get to him, but God was already with him. You must understand that God is always with you, but you got to connect with the God that is always with you. And one of the prayers I prayed, obviously, was for healing. But I said, God, let him walk away. Let him walk away. And I hear he's home resting. He walked away. Hallelujah. Don't tell me you got to pray a long prayer. Don't tell me you, you have to be an intercessor to pray. No, you just got to pray. 
put on your spiritual headset to work praying. Put on your spiritual headsets, amen, so you can know what God is saying to you. I don't care if you're a teenager, I don't care if you're old, young, middle-aged. This, this word is for all of us. Nehemiah, it says, with prayer to God, he replied. If it please the king, and if you are pleased with me, your servant, send me to Judah to rebuild the city where my ancestors are buried. The king, with the queen sitting beside him, asked, how long will you be gone? When will you return? These are detailed questions. But I believe that when we pray, God can give us detailed instructions. God is not an abstract God that's so big that he can't give you details about every area of your life. Whatever you need to know, he can give you an answer to it. He gave me an answer to this situation with these knockoffs. Amen. And he gave me a price when I asked him for a price. And then guess what? It just got better and better after that. Because I heard his voice. I asked him, God, what are you saying? Nehemiah had to ask God in prayer, Lord, what are you saying? How should I answer the king? The king had specific questions. How long will you be gone? When will you return? After I told him how long I will be gone, God gave him the answer. The king agreed to my request. Notice verse 7. And I love this verse. It says, I also said to the king, if it please the king, let me have letters addressed to the governors of the province west of the Euphrates River, instructing them to let me travel safely through their territories on my way to Judah. Verse number eight, and please give me a letter. Everybody say a letter. Please give me a letter addressed to Asaph, the manager of the king's forest, instructing him, watch this, to give me timber. I will need it to make beams for the gates of the temple fortress for the city walls, and for a house for myself. And the king did what? He granted these requests. Because the gracious hand of who? God was on me. Let's break this down. Everybody say details. details. Nehemiah just didn't ask God, God, give me an answer to the king's questions. Nehemiah went far beyond that in prayer. Nehemiah sought God for direction on how to instruct the king. <laughs> oh, that's a whole nother level, amen. <laughs> See, you may be dealing with situations on your job practically, <clears throat> and you may be asking God, well, God, just get me out of this. Or God, move me to another position or move me to another job or, 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 or help me in this situation. But God wants to take you even deeper than what you can even imagine. I want to submit to you, God can instruct you on how to instruct the people on your job. To where he gives you, amen, things to say to them that blows their mind. The king wasn't expecting Nehemiah to ask him for letters. Letters were like uh, bank loans or, 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 or promissory notes or letters were like, amen, passports. He said, number one, I need a letter to the governors that was a passport. He said, so that I can get through these countries without them killing me. King never asked him, well, Nehemiah, do you need a letter? No, he put on his spiritual headsets and he heard from God when he said, God, what are you saying? God said, you're going to need a letter. You're going to need a passport in order to get to Jerusalem. So he began to school the king based on what he knew God told him he needed. 
But the second one is verse number eight. He says, God, what else do I need to know? He said, school the king on this, God said. You need a bank note. You need a letter to ASAP that will release the resources that I've already provided. <laughs> Now, who's the, who, who created the timber? Was it, was it the man, Asap, or the king of Persia, or was it God? So God is the source of the timber. Nehemiah needed timber to build the, the walls back. He needed timber to build his house. He needed timber to build, amen, whatever he was building in Jerusalem. So he went to the source, and he said, God, what do I need? The source said, you're going to need this resource called timber. Nehemiah didn't have the resource, but yet God had the resource because he's the source. Amen. See, when you pray and you really seek and follow after God, he's the source of every living thing. And whatever resources you need, he knows how to get it in your hands. How many of you believe that today? So Nehemiah had to be bold. Everybody said, when you pray, you have to be bold. He had to be bold. He had to be bold enough to not be scared to ask the king for what he needed. I truly believe that too many Christians in the body of Christ today are scared. They're scared to ask for what they need. And they let life just walk all over them. Why are you settling for less than God's best? Come on, come on. Wow. It's real quiet right now. Why are you settling for less than God's best? Come on, wow. God dealt with me with that yesterday. I was eating some lunch, and I went into... The, the, the sub shop, and, I, and I'm trying to lose a little weight, so I got what they call an unwitch, which is a lettuce wrap. <laughs> <clears throat> and I went in there, and I had to wait on the, them to prepare it. The Lord said, well, step outside. And I go to this place all the time, and it's busy all the time. He said, go to the back. <clears throat> and I went to the back, and there's a, there's a big drop off, and there's a pond or a lake or something back there. And I saw something. I never, we just pull in the parking lot, you get what you get, and you drive off. And I went to the back of the restaurant, in the back parking lot, looked down over this cliff. I saw three huge, huge turtles on a log. I mean, they looked like they were about this big. And at the same time, they all dived into the pond and were gone. Then I saw a beautiful crane that was in the water. And God says, see... You drive to this place all the time, but you never even know what's around you. And then he went from that. He said, your issue is never money. <laughs> so often we think our issue is money. He said, your issue is never money. He said, your issue is timing. And he began to rebuke me. He said, so often you will say, well, we can't do this because we don't have the money right now. Or we can't do that because we don't have the money right now. And God was telling me, he said, that's not the issue. Because I own the cattle on a thousand hills. The issue is never money. He said, stop making that your excuse. He said, the issue is timing. Everybody say timing. timing. The issue could be patience. Everybody say patience. The issue could be a lack of hearing and knowing what I am saying. He said, but if it's of me, it's never about money. Too many times we sell ourselves short because we make the main thing the wrong thing. Let me deal with it another way. 
if you feel lonely, the issue is not a relationship. Because you already have a relationship with God. So it's not a relationship. It's not having somebody in your life to complete you. That's not the issue. The issue is am I going to connect with the God that created me that he can satisfy me as I wait on him to add another resource to me? I'm speaking to singles right now. Well, we can't do this right now. Well, when can you do it? I don't know. Why don't you know? Because you're not hearing what God is saying. Nehemiah took the time to hear what God was saying. And when he did that, he got stuff that he didn't even realize was going to be made available to him. He got resources that no one else could give him but God. And the Bible says that when he went to the governor ASAP, that ASAP, because he had this paperwork in order, he had the letter from the king. ASAP said, get whatever you want. Take as much as you need. If you can't pay your rent, the issue is not money. If you can't pay your mortgage or your car payment, the issue is not money. The issue is you're not putting on your spiritual headset. You're not tapping into the power source. You're not utilizing the power tool. Because the first thing God will do is self-examine you. When you go to the doctor, you might have an issue with a cough or a cold. But yet, they're still going to check your blood pressure. <laughs> How many of you know that? Amen. Because that's a part of the examination. Doesn't matter if you didn't come for blood pressure. They're still going to check it. God is still going to check you when you come to him in prayer. And if you come consistently enough and, and, and seek him enough and call on him enough, and he said, I won't disappoint you, he's going to begin to show you that, guess what? You have the money, you just spend it the wrong way. Wow, wow, wow. You think you're lonely, but I'm laying in the bed with you every night. But yet you still need somebody else to lay beside you. Wow. It's tight, but it's right. So, utilizing this power of prayer means that we submit to us an examination by our God. And that we allow God to examine where we are and show us where he wants to take us or where we need to be. Without the examination then we'll keep going on through life, walking around trying to hear, but we're not exercising the right tools. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Is this helping you today? Amen. Nehemiah, because he checked in and connected with God the source, he was able to get the timber, he was able to get the letters, he was able to get everything he needed to rebuild the wall and to build his own house. I want to submit to you today, everything you need, God's got it, it's right there, you don't have to hunt for it, it's already in his hands, it's already a supply that's made available to you if you will connect with it, the power source of prayer. what you need to go through life and ultimately be successful in the life that you go through. Amen. How many of you believe that today? Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Everybody say under pressure. This next power tool, and I'm going to cut it off after this next power tool. This next power tool is, 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 is here for us any time of the day or night, but especially when you're under pressure. Especially when you are feeling a certain kind of way. 
Turn with me to Luke chapter 12. We talked about the power tool of prayer connecting us to the heavenly source. Let's look at the next power tool in Luke chapter 12. I truly believe that the Lord is speaking today. Amen. As the title is, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying? Luke chapter 12 and verse number 11. <clears throat> Everybody say under pressure. under pressure. Under pressure, under pressure, under pressure. Many of us can identify with that. The times in our life where we're under pressure. Jesus he gave the disciples and those that were listening a warning in Luke 12, in the King James Version, in verse number 11. It says, and when they bring you unto the synagogues and unto the magistrates and powers, take ye no thought how or what thing you shall answer. Or what you shall say. In other words, Jesus was talking about persecution that would happen because they served him as his disciples. He said there would be a day when they would bring you on trial to the judges or the magistrates. They would, they would bring you to the powers that be. And Jesus said in those moments of pressure, in those moments of hardship, in those moments of difficulty, in those moments of challenges, he said, don't take thought on how or what thing you shall answer. In other words, don't take matters in your own hands. Don't try to figure it out on your own. Don't go back to what you think is right. Don't even consider what other people have to say. He says in verse 12, for the Holy Ghost, <laughs> for the Holy Ghost shall do what? Shall teach you in that what? Not next week, not next year, not next month, but in the same hour, in the same moment, in the same second. He says the Holy Ghost, everybody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. That settles it for me, the power source of the Holy Ghost will teach you in the midst of pressure what you ought to do. So we don't have to make mistakes anymore. I'm not getting a whole lot of amens off of that. I said so we don't have to make mistakes anymore. Who says you got to make a mistake? Who told you you had to make a mistake? My God. Come on. Preach you want to know who told you that? Satan did. The same way he told Adam and Eve, that ain't really what God said. We think that we have to live a life a mess up. And so we become people that always make excuses for our mess ups. But this word has come to tighten us up today. So you realize, you know what? If I access the power tool of the Holy Ghost, I don't really have to make all of these dumb mistakes. Mistakes can cost you. How many believe that? Mistakes can set you back. Mistakes can wipe out your bank account. Mistakes can affect your health, your marriage, your relationship with your children, your family members. Mistakes. I believe this is why Jesus told him, he said, listen, when you're under that kind of pressure, he said, take ye no thought how or what thing you will answer. He said, don't even think about it. In other words, he wasn't telling them that, that they were dumb or they were stupid. He said, don't think about it, pray about it. <laughs> don't think about it, exercise the Holy Spirit. Do you know the Holy Spirit lives on the inside of you? If you are a born-again believer today, how many of you are glad the Holy Spirit lives inside of you? 
24-7, eight days a week, the Holy Spirit is always speaking to you. Oh, he's trying to. Right now, you have heard words in this message, and the Holy Spirit is confirming what you have heard. The Holy Spirit is speaking to you and saying, you know what that preacher is saying is true. Sometimes you walk away from a service, a message, and you say, God, it seemed like the preacher was talking to me today. No, that was the Holy Ghost. Because I don't know your situation, but the Holy Spirit goes home with you. The Holy Spirit rides in the car with you. The Holy Spirit, amen, listens to your conversations. The Holy Spirit knows you. Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless, but I will give you another comforter. Even the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth, and he shall lead and guide you. Parents, are you teaching your children, whether they're young, old, or in between, to rely upon you more or the Holy Ghost more? When they get in trouble, do they know not to think up their own way out of it? As Jesus says here. Have you taught them not to think about what they're going to do, but to connect with the power source that knows the best thing for them to do? What are you teaching your children? You can't teach them what you first don't do yourself. You got to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. Everybody say, I need to be retaught. We need to be retaught on how to rely upon the Holy Ghost as our power source, our power tool that connects us to the ultimate source of everything that we need. When you're under pressure, when you're in challenging situations, when you're in difficult times, that is not the time, Jesus says, to figure it out on your own. I got my hair cut yesterday, and I was on my way to the church. I came to the church, and while I was here, the Lord said, go up, go up to Lake Norman. I went up to Lake Norman. I drove to Lake Norman State Park. Anybody ever been there? I went up there. I thought that... I was just going to go out there by the lake and pray and seek God. And I, and I did that. I'd never been to Lake Norman State Park. Beautiful park. And I went into the visitor center, and, 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 and then they said, I said, well, where's the best view of the lake? And they told me, and I drove another mile or two uh, to what they call the swimming area. Beautiful, beautiful uh, view of a portion of Lake Norman. But when I pull into the parking lot, there's paramedics, there's an there's a ambulance, there's fire trucks, there's, uh, uh, poli- there's sheriff cars, there's state patrol. And the Lord said, don't turn around, park. So I park and I'm walking and I'm seeing all of these uh, uh, officers and paramedics and all these people and they're not really doing anything, they're, they're kind of standing around and so I'm walking all around, first time out there. Then I walk on to the, the um, pier-like area where they fish off of. And, and there's a bunch of them over there. And so I just, and I just asked them, I said, well, are you guys doing a drill? Is this some kind of um, drill that's taking place? He said, no, there's a body missing in the water. I drove 45 minutes from here to Lake Norman State Park, 45 minutes, not really knowing everything but God. When I connected to the power source, he told me to drive those 45 minutes. And here I was right in the middle, and I look over, and there's a pontoon boat full of people and they're crying. 
And one of the officers said, somebody's missing off that boat. And I sit there, and guess what I do? I begin to pray. God has me walk by those people in that boat, and I begin to pray for every one of them. Don't tell me that these power tools don't work. You may not understand why God is directing you a certain way. But when you get God's directions, you better follow them. I understood crystal clear that God needed his manservant there to pray. Officers standing around, paramedics standing around. There were people in the water playing and having a great time. I looked around. Who are the people praying out here? And God said, that's why I sent you here. To pray. And I sat there and I was out there about 30 minutes. Observing and praying. Now, nobody was found, thank God. I don't know the outcome of it. But I do know that when you don't know what to do, pray. When you don't know what to do, be led by the Holy Spirit. What may sound crazy to you, if it's God's voice speaking to you, it's better than your voice speaking to you. And in the midst of that time, God began to speak to me about different things. And he said, see, this is why it's so important to know what I am saying. Because you never know when you're going to be in a situation under pressure. You never know when I'm going to put you in a position to pray for somebody else that's under pressure. And that's just not for me. That's for you too. People of God, as I close today, it's vitally important that we know what God is saying. God wants you and I to be in a better position in 2022 than we were in 2021. How many of you believe that today? We can't get into the positions that God would have us to be in Unless we hear, know, and do what the Lord is saying. And as we rest on our feet, my prayer for you today is that there's something in the Word, something in the teaching, something in the illustrations today that is causing you to think a different way. That's causing you to think not just a different way, but God's way. The last scripture we read in Luke 12, Jesus said, when you're under pressure, don't just think about what you're going to do. Rely upon the Holy Spirit to teach you. Some of you may go home to pressure situations, but I want to submit to you today, this word has come to equip and prepare you. Will you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you? Some of you right now, you don't know what next week is going to bring, but there may be some challenges that you come into next week. But will you allow the Holy Spirit, the power tool of the Holy Ghost, to instruct and teach you what to do? Some of you facing some financial challenges some financial situations going on in your life right now. Some of you want to know what direction is my life going in, God? you got power tools. Use your power tools. Use the power tool of prayer. Use the power tool of the Holy Ghost. Listening to the voice of God that lives on the inside of you. That's the Holy Spirit. 
Some of you right now, you're frustrated with your adult children. <laughs> I say don't be frustrated. Be educated. <laughs> be liberated. Be educated through the Holy Spirit. Be liberated through the power of prayer. Let frustration go. Some of you are frustrated in your marriage. I say the same thing to you. Be educated. Be liberated. Some of you are frustrated as singles. Be educated. Be liberated. Through the power of prayer and the Holy Spirit. It's situation critical, people of God. Just like I didn't realize it, but there was a purpose for me driving to Lake Norman Park on yesterday. I didn't know somebody who had drowned or perhaps they thought had drowned or was missing. I didn't know any of that, but yet God knew that he needed prayer warriors and intercessors dispatched to that location. God knew that there were people on that pontoon boat that were crying and hurting and broken. And they needed somebody to pray on their behalf. People of God, never discount the power of prayer. The power of prayer and the power of the Holy Ghost, they're the greatest power tools you can ever have. because they supersede time and space. You don't have to be educated to connect with them. You don't have to be at home. You can be anywhere in this world and still have a connection. Be educated. Be liberated today. Every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today that this series, What Are You Saying, is helping us. It's helping each and every one of us to be educated and liberated through the power of prayer, through the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, let us be like Nehemiah. We just don't want to have answers to the questions that people give to us, but we want to be able to direct people in the right way way to go give us direction oh God Jesus you are the one that died and was crucified and rose on the third day so we can have access to the Holy Spirit you said Jesus I would not leave you comfortless but I will give you another comforter even the Holy Ghost the spirit of truth. Lord, we're not relying upon your spirit enough. We're not relying upon the Holy Ghost enough. Help your people to rely upon the power tool of the Holy Ghost. He has everything that they need, everything that we need. For every area and every aspect of our lives. Lord, when we leave this sanctuary today, when we leave the house of God today, when we, when we turn off the internet or Facebook Live, things are not ending. The message is not ending. We're just now in a position to go in even deeper. Let your people go deeper, oh God. Go deeper into knowing what you are saying. I hear the Lord say, get a journal. If you don't have one, get a journal. Write it down. Starting today, go to Walmart, go to wherever you got to go. And if you have one you haven't used it in a while, dust it off begin to write what the Lord is saying maybe you don't have a paper journal get, it, get your iPad create space 
in your notes. The Lord said, you've not been writing enough what I've been saying. You've not been writing enough what I've been saying. See, whatever God says is significant. And there's some things that our natural mind will hear but not remember. This is why the power of the pen is so important. The Lord says, write the things that I say unto you. I promise you, if you're a business person, and you begin to write the things that God says, he'll begin to show you strategies. He'll begin to create opportunities that you hadn't even thought about yet. I promise you, if you're in a financial bind right now, if you write the things that the Lord is saying, He'll liberate you from that financial bondage. He'll show you a way out and a way up. He'll educate you beyond your self-education. Write the things that the Lord is saying unto you. Father, I pray right now over your people. I pray that every word that has been released on today, that it will be spirit and life unto them. For Jesus, you said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Let them connect with the spirit that produces life the life-giving spirit on today. And even as they transition from this place, they'll never transition from your presence. Let them become more educated in the spirit realm. Let them become more educated in prayer and liberated through the power tools that you've made available to them. I thank you now, Father, that households are turning around, marriages are turning around, singles are turning around, teenagers are turning around, young children are turning around, men and women are turning around because you are more than enough. For every challenge, you are more than enough. For every situation, you are more than enough, Jesus. You are more than enough. We thank you today that next week won't be a bad week. Next week won't be a week full of mistakes, full of mess-ups, full of things happening to us, and we just let them happen to us. But we're going on the offense. We're going on the offense, God, and we're seeking you. We're consistently seeking you. The power of prayer, the power of the Holy Ghost is how we will consistently seek you and call on you. With every eye closed, if you're here today, maybe you're watching online, and you never made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, we want to extend the opportunity for you to do so right now. If that's you, you say, Pastor Anthony, that's me. I want you to raise your hand. If you're in live service, raise your hand. Let us know who you are. If you say, I'm ready to receive Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. One of the first scriptures we read was about eternal life. That means living life beyond this life. The only way to receive eternal life is to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. If you're online and you're saying, that's me, Pastor Anthony, I want to pray with you right now. Would you repeat after me? Dear God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ 
to die on Calvary's cross for my sins. And I ask you now to forgive me of my sins, to cleanse me of all unrighteousness, to come into my heart, into my life, to be my personal Lord and Savior. You prayed that simple prayer. We want you to know that you are saved, you are born again. This is the beginning of your discipleship journey, not the end. Go to our website, click on the contact tab if you're watching online. Send us your information. We want to get information back out to you. If you are in live service and you prayed that prayer of salvation, you can raise your hand. We'll receive you with open arms and love. Perhaps you desire to connect with Love Fellowship Church and membership. We call it covenant connection. And you say, Pastor Anthony, I've heard the voice of God. I know that this is the place that God wants me to connect as my church home and my church family. Well, guess what? We want you to connect, amen, today. If that's you, raise your hand. We want to receive you into the family of believers here at Love Fellowship Church with open arms and with love, amen. If you desire special prayer, we never want to neglect you and the needs that you may have. So if you desire special prayer, why don't you raise your hand? We're available to pray with you, pray for you. I see the hands that are coming up, amen, right now. If you'll come forward, uh, Minister Shauna, if you'll come forward, amen. Pastor Renee, there are people coming. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. All can line up, please. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may take your seats and we'll be praying for those, amen, that are at the altar right now, interceding on their behalf. Praise God. Hallelujah.